How can we best redevelop mature assets at the Norwegian continental shelf? How can we make a winning team where operators and suppliers work together? And what are the prospects for the oil and gas activity in Norway? We invited Kristen Kragset, CEO of Vår Energi, and Jan Narvestad, CEO of Rosenberg, to discuss this. Mike Henry, communication director in ONS, leads the discussion. Welcome to Rosenberg Wally, a landmark here in the great energy city Stavanger. It's great to be here with the Jotun ship right behind us. And it's actually nearly 20 years since the ship left the Rosenberg Wally yard and Stavanger. And now it's back to be refurbished and used for the Balder Future project. Together with us here today, we have Kristin Kragset, you're the CEO of Vår Energi and also the operator of the Balder field. Yes. And we also have Jan Navestad, you're the managing director here in Rosenberg Wally. Correct. Great to have you here today. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you're both uh, responsible for getting this beauty back together in tip top shape and bringing it out offshore back to continue her journey. So first, Kirsten, explain to us what this means to Vår Energy. I will, but first I'd just like to say I'm going to miss ONS big time. Aww. Yes. So uh, what you have done with ONS uh, over the decades that uh, you have existed is just remarkable. Uh, getting all people uh, working on energy together, which is also the theme of this year. And uh, reflecting on the world together, uh, that's what we need to solve the energy questions of today and at the same time tackle the climate issues. So I'm going to miss all the ONS people this year. That's great to hear. We're going to miss it too. Yes. Uh, but what does this mean? Well, it means a lot to us. Uh, it, uh, it is a project uh, where we are investing 19 billion kroner. So it's a huge project and it means a lot for us as a company, for our owners, but also for the suppliers and the society at large. So uh, we have uh, almost 30,000 uh, man years going to be working on this beauty, as you called her, uh, for the projects and over the year of, of the operation. Uh, at peak, we will be 4,500 people uh, working to refurbish it and get it out uh, into the field again. Uh, and uh, it's really also uh, uh, a sign of what the Norwegian supply industry can deliver because 70% of the contracts goes to Norwegian uh, suppliers. Uh, most of them actually located just around us. And it's also an example uh, of doing what Norwegians are going to do with the oil and gas. It's to recover the resources for the benefit of the greater community. And uh, 140 million barrels is going to be produced with that. And that's the beginning. So we'll see how far we go. Ah, oh, that sounds really great. <laughs> and Jan, can you explain the importance of this project for Rosenberg Wally and your sub suppliers? Yeah, uh, I will try to do that. Uh, there's no doubt that this uh, project is very special and it's very important. And if you look that into uh, related to size, to the concept uh, and also to the activity. And if we start with the size, uh, if we look back uh, to 2019, uh, this was the biggest project uh, that was uh, awarded uh, that year. And obviously for Rosenberg and also for Worley, this is a huge project. Uh, and also, if you look uh, what we can see here today, it uh, shows uh, its physical presence very well in the city picture. So there's no doubt that uh, from a size point of view, it's very important. Then if you look into the concept, uh, uh, I would say there is uh, several things that is important to look into. If we compare this to a greenfield project, obviously it has things that is beneficial related to the environment. Uh, if you look into time and cost, uh, it will also prove that this is uh, a beneficial way of uh, executing these types of uh, project. And then uh, last but not least, of course, of the magnitude and the size of this project, it means a lot of activity. And there's no doubt that for Rosenberg and Worley, this is the biggest project uh, 
that we have had, at least for Rosenberg, for quite some time. Uh, and it will also mean that there will be a big activity outside Rosenberg. And if you look into the project as, as such, approximately 50% of the contract value is third-party services. So this will not only be huge for Rosenberg and the yard here, but also for the subcontractors that will be participating and helping us in order to achieve a success. Sounds very good. It's a very large project as we can see here as well. Like you, you said, you can actually see it in the, most of the city picture, you can see the, the ship. And as you mentioned, Kristin, the main topic for ONS 2020 is together. And this truly looks like a project with good teamwork and where it is necessary to make it happen. And uh, which means you have to deliver on time, you have to deliver on cost, and you actually have to do it with a high quality as well. So Jan, um, what's the best way to make interaction between operators and suppliers? And how do you make it work in a good and efficient way? Well, first, I think I would like to say that if we are looking back to our history in uh, executing project, uh, the project which we have had the biggest success with, it's definitely where we have a good cooperation with the client. Uh, here at this uh, project, uh, we have one big uh, focus that we call one team. Uh, and uh, the reason for why we have choose to follow that is obviously that we see there is a great benefits if you're able to combine the two teams uh, competence capacity and also knowledge and you can just imagine here we are the professional project executor while war energy is the professional operator and the people that have been uh, working on this ship for so many years they definitely know all the secrets about this project. So when we are combining this, we see that as a very big uh, opportunity to make the success both War and Rosenberg and Worley are really focusing on here. Oh, sounds good. And how about you, Kristin? How do you as an operator work to make the Uten redevelopment team function optimal also uh, in the whole value chain? I think it's a lot what Jan say, uh, talks about, and it's really about people, uh, bringing the people together uh, and the one theme uh, that we talked about. Uh, here we have one team uh, in 30 minutes, probably with a rowboat almost. I can, uh, I can visit uh, most of the, the suppliers uh, uh, that, is, is, that are, are participating on this ship. So the geographical closeness makes a difference, and maybe in particularly in these days when travel is difficult. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. And, and I think uh, also uh, just the Norwegian model, uh, the cooperation that we have uh, between the suppliers, the operators, the employees, the government, uh, all of us, uh, collaboration to me is one of the main themes. And I'd like to, to, one thing that Jan keeps telling is that uh, uh, the, 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 the fact that you want to succeed, if that is bigger than your fear to fail, then you come a long way. So one team and, and a winning team, uh, I think that's what both of us uh, wants this to be. I think that's a very good quote, so I'm going to use that. <laughs> um, and as I mentioned also, uh, the Jotun FBSO was partly born here at Rosenberg Worley, and now she'll soon be back offshore to be part of the Baldurex uh, redevelopment project. And it's also one of the first licenses to be awarded at the Norwegian continental shelf, uh, so we can characterize this as a mature area. And Kirsten, do you think mature areas will be the main focus for the companies uh, going forward? And, and how do you think this will kind of impact the future for new projects on the NCS? Uh, first of all, I have to correct you. Uh, it was the first license. <laughs> so it's production license 001 with license to drill. Uh, and uh, and uh, the first well was actually, uh, the first oil in the North Sea was found at uh, PL001. It was found in uh, 67. Uh, I was one month and one day old oh, when it was found. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually found, I found out, on the, on the birthday of my daughter. So there must be a sign somewhere here. <laughs> 
No, I think uh, I think uh, what we do here is uh, we've seen changes on the NCS uh, where some of the majors have uh, reprioritized their activities, and instead there has come new players into into to to the game, uh, like Vår Energi. Uh, we have strong owners in uh, ENI and high tech that wants to pursue opportunities in Norway. And uh, when uh, when I was working in Exxon, the plan was for Jotun and Balda to, in the mid 20s, they were finished. But we knew that there were opportunities out there. We we had stuff in our drawers that we hadn't pursued, mm. and that's what the new owner saw. Mm. So this is really a result of new forces coming in, and we see that on a, on, on a lot of uh, of fields in in Norway these days. Um, so that is the mature, the close, let's reuse the installation and infrastructure that is al already there. That must be the best thing we can do. Uh, but still, uh, Norway is really an unexplored country compared to many of the other countries that do oil and gas. And we do it very well. Uh, and uh, Barents, for example, uh, we have the Goliath field up there. We are developing the Kasberg field. We are still doing exploration. And we believe there's more, more stuff up there. Mm. We just have to find it. Yeah. And we have to find it because the world will continue to need energy. Definitely. And uh, if we move into uh, a period where the redevelopment projects will be a significant part of projects at the NCS, how do you, Jan, think it will impact or what will it mean for suppliers and your projects? Well, first of all, I don't think the mix between greenfield and uh, brownfield uh, project development will uh, matter that much because I think the majority of Norwegian uh, uh, contractors or, or, or suppliers are already uh, prepared to be in both uh, uh, of those uh, areas. It's more about the volume and uh, activity that obviously is uh, of great interest. And there's no doubt that uh, the supplier organization have, uh, as also hopefully for the operator, big expectation with respect to the new tax regimes that has been agreed and that obviously that will uh, create a lot of uh, new opportunities and activity. Uh, and, and that's why I say activity is very important because uh, for us as um, contractors and suppliers, it's very important that we have continuity into our uh, activity so that we can continuously develop our working process, continues to be more efficient, and by that also uh, help uh, the operators when we are talking about oil and gas. But also another very important point is when we are talking about uh, uh, transformation and new energies. Uh, my uh, strongest uh, advice there is definitely to secure that we here in Norway will have a very successful transformation. We need to make sure that we have existing activity ongoing while we are developing and exploring new technologies, new market segments, new type of energies. And through that, Norway can still be a, a big supplier of uh, energy that is needed uh, worldwide. And thank you for bringing me over to my, my new topic, <laughs> which is actually the energy transition, as yeah. you touched on. But how do you use your uh, existing oil and gas competence to build on newer markets such as uh, renewables, wind, offshore wind, etc.? Yeah, obviously also referring back to what I said, what is important for us in order to success or succeed is that we can continue with the activity and organization and competence that we have. And then we will use our main competence, like for example Rosenberg, we are very good in executing big complex projects. We believe that we can also do that in other areas which is outside oil and gas. But we need to make sure that we find those markets and that we can gradually transform that into the new market. So uh, that is one of the focus area for us. And then I'm quite sure also if you look into the majority of uh, the Norwegian uh, suppliers, uh, there has been through uh, many years or decades uh, a lot of focus of technology and technology development. And there are only one reason why they've been able to do that is that they have had ongoing activity as they have been developing these uh, new technologies. So we need to have a market to make this happen. We definitely do. Yeah. 
And how about for you, Kristin, in Vår Energy? You're uh, a sole oil and gas company. And uh, with global pressures building on, on climate change and, and climate targets, etc., how do you work to adapt to necessary energy uh, transformation? A lot the same uh, as, as uh, was mentioned by Jan. And uh, uh, again, back to together and collaboration. Uh, so the Norwegian oil and gas industry has together uh, said that uh, we want to be part of the change. Uh, we need to have two thoughts in our mind at the same time, provide energy, but we need to be better at it. So mm. what we have said is that we will reduce our emissions by 50% in 2030 and get it close to zero in 2050, which is a huge, huge mm. task. Mm. But, but uh, history has, has, has told us when we say we're going to do something, we are delivering. And history has told Rosenberg, you were the first to develop the, the LNG tankers, mm. the design. And look where you are now. Mm. So we have so many examples where our industry has set target and we are reaching them. Mm. And uh, um, we are in the midst of transition. Uh, we have the Goliath field up in the north, which is mainly powered by electricity from shore. And uh, when, when that was built, a lot of people were doubting whether we could do it because no electrical cord had been pulled that far out into the water. And it, it wasn't kind of a one that you need for a lamp. It was uh, quite massive. <laughs> so can we do it? And at the time, uh, it was a world record. It should have been in the Guinness Book, probably, because it was the longest electrical cable of the type. Uh, and the good thing is that that world record has been beaten because somebody else took that and made it even longer. <laughs> So I think there are so many examples of where we, in, we as an industry say we're going to do something. Now we're doing the offshore windmills uh, at the Hive in Tampen. We are doing it. Uh, set the target and go. We can manage. And I think that concludes our conversation <laughs> very well. Let's set bold targets and just deliver and let's do this together. And with that, we, do, we want to say thank you so much here from Rosenberg Wally Yard in Stavanger. <laughs>